Here, let's see how we can solve an absolute value equation that has two absolute value parts. Usually, we will just get rid of this absolute value, but we will have to consider the plus and also the minus cases. Right here, we will have to do the same, get rid of the absolute value, and then consider the positive and also the negative case. So in this case, we will end up with four cases. Not ideal. So let me show you guys how we can work this out this way. In fact, we can rewrite the absolute value as the square root of x squared. And notice, the square root has to be on the outside. All right? So, let me just do a quick review for you guys. Notice, when we have the square root of x squared, after we cancel the square and the square root, because the output of the square root is always positive, so don't just put an x, but rather we need the absolute value like so. All right. However, if we have square root of x and then square, guess what? This right here is just equal to x. This right here is just equal to x. And um, shall we consider x is greater than or equal to 0? Kind of, kind of, depending if you allow complex numbers or not. Because right here, if you have, let's say, square root of negative 1, and then you square that, in fact, you end up with negative 1, and this is legitimate, if we allowed complex numbers. And the reason is because we work this inside out. Square root of negative 1 is i, and then when we square that, hey, that's exactly negative 1, thanks to our definition. So I'm just going to erase this little condition because... Yeah, let's assume that we can have complex numbers. All right, so be really careful with this and that. So for this absolute value of x, it has to be the square root on the outside and the x squared inside. And let's just continue. We will do the same for the other case, right? Here, for the other square root right here, uh, for the other absolute value here. This is square root of x minus 2 squared, and that's equal to 3. What do we do next? Let's go ahead and cancel all the square. No, don't do that. Because if we cancel the square and also the square root now, we get back to the original. Don't do it. So we will have to utilize this idea to help us out. And in order to us in order for us to square both sides, let's isolate this part first. So I'm moving this to the other side. So we have square root of x minus 2 squared equals 3 minus the square root of x squared. From here, let's square both sides. And on the left-hand side, we can legitimately cancel this and that, and then we'll just have the inside as how it is, x minus 2 squared, all right? And then on the right-hand side, let's just multiply this out. So we will just do 3 squared, which is 9, and then minus 2 times this and that, which is going to be 6, and then that, square root of x squared. And lastly, we add this part squared, so that square and the square root will cancel, so we just get x squared. So we almost have a quadratic equation now, except for the fact that we still have the square root of x squared. And I want to isolate this so we can square both sides. But before that, let's multiply this out. So we have x squared minus 4x plus 4. That's equal to 9 minus 6 square root of x squared plus x squared. And then I'm... You know, this and that will cancel because we can minus x squared on both sides. And then minus 9 on both sides. Yeah, so this and that will cancel. Cool. All right, so yeah, let, let's, let's put this down first. We have negative 6 square root of x squared. That will be equal to that, which is negative 4x. And then that is minus 5. So this is negative 6 times that. We should divide by negative 6, right? But don't do that because otherwise we end up with fractions. It's not preferred. Yet. Let's just go ahead and square both sides. Yeah, I think it's easier this way. So we see this is going to be negative square is positive and then 6 squared is 36. And then square root square is canceled it and then we just have x squared. Good. And then here we will have negative 4 squared is 16 and then that will give us x squared. And because both of them are negative, so in fact this term will be positive. 
and then 2 times this and that, which is 2 times 4 is 8, and then 8 times that is 40x, and then lastly we add 5 squared, which is 25, yeah, like this. Okay, now let's move everything to the other side. So we are going to get the following, let me just put it down here. 36x squared minus 16x squared, we will get 20x squared. Bring this and that to the other side, so minus 40x minus 25 equals 0. Now, we have a quadratic equation. We will have the two answers. All right, so let's actually just divide everything by 5 first. That way we can reduce the number a little bit, and we get 4x squared minus 8x minus 5 equals 0. Can we solve this? Can we factor it? Yes. Let's do the tic-tac-toe factory. So let's see. I want to have 2x here, 2x here, and I want to have negative 5 here and 1. Check this out. 2x times 1 is 2x. Negative 5 times 2x is negative 10x. Right? Combine this and that together, we do get negative x. So we get the correct combination, and we will just have the factoring being 2x minus 5 times 2x plus 1 equals 0. So we put this to be 0 and then solve for x. We get x equals 5 over 2. And then same thing, and we will get x equals negative 1 over 2. Now we have two answers. We should check the answers, but I don't have too much. <laughs> I, I, I run out of space. I did the, do the work already, right? So. I'm going to leave the check for you guys, just plugging 5 over 2 into here and here and then just see if it works or not. Likewise, do the same for negative 1 half. And I'll tell you, this checks, this is checked. This is also legit. So here we have it. This is how we can solve an absolute value equation with two absolute value parts without doing the cases.